But I want to tell you what I have observed. I observed a man who was a Solicitor General of Texas, the youngest one, I think, in the country, in the United States of America, um, went off to study at Princeton, and uh, happened to be friends with Robbie George when he studied under him. That's a, that's a very strong endorsement when I have that private conversation with Professor Robbie George. Um, to, uh, but, but his law degree from Harvard University, I sometimes find myself in a room all of lawyers and occasionally in a room that's all Harvard lawyers. And I only have to argue one side of the issue, but they have to understand both sides. If you're going to argue as a Solicitor General, if you're going to go before the United States Supreme Court, which Senator Cruz has done multiple times, you don't get to be like Steve King. Say, I'm simplex. I've either got to talk or listen. But if you're arguing before the court, you've got to be able to argue, think, and listen at the same time. You've got to be able to hear the questions, show, formulate your answer, finish the answer you're on, and think strategy all on your feet. That takes a really nimble person. You know, I, somebody that can do that um, is somebody that can run this country. And we've got a man here that was rooted in our constitutional values, was a full-spectrum constitutional conservative. He's described me as fearless, but I will tell you Ted Cruz is fearless. And I watched last summer as they were pushing the Gang of AIDS amnesty bill through the United States Senate. There, were a, there was a short list that sat in that committee and fought off and fought off and bought amendments to try to fix that Gang of AIDS bill. Now, I don't very often see senators that will come over and step into the firing line uh, like Ted Cruz, but we decided one day, it happened to be June 19th of last summer, to hold a press conference. Oh, and by the way, it was the end of the anniversary of the last slaves that had been freed after the Civil War, 1865, June 19th, in Texas. That was the anniversary of, they call it a Juneteenth, but a June 19th is the most used day. Ted Cruz came over, we started a press conference up at 9 in the morning, it lasted until 5 o'clock at night. It was the longest press conference in the history of the United States Congress. Now, it wasn't the longest filibuster, but Ted Cruz came close to that. And and I want to tell you that to, to come over and go in the middle of this and take that position strongly and with associate with the people that he did. And uh, then, and then from that point on, holding the line on amnesty as an inspiration tied together with Jeff Sessions and a few others in the, in the United States Senate, that wasn't enough. Uh, we also watched as spending went on forward and we got to that point where going into last fall where somebody needed to make a decision. The continuing resolution that we funded the government until midnight September 30th, sometime in about July, I became aware that there were some people thinking about cutting off the funding to implement or enforce Obamacare. Now, that strategy that was put together took a massive effort to do so. It took a coordinated effort. It took a media message. It took outside groups working together. It took people that the rest had confidence in that they would stand strong and not waver and that the heat was going to come from colleagues, from establishment elements that are there, from all Democrats. Remember, they said it's a law of the land. Obamacare is a law of the land. You've got to fund it because it's a law of the land. They don't say that anymore, do they? Nobody knows what the law is today because our president has so violated the Constitution and, and amended Obamacare. But Ted Cruz led on this. And I remember when the House got to this position where we were ready to say, we're going to hold the line also on this spending and face a government shutdown to make this point of this principle that... that that Obamacare needed to end. And somebody said, uh, as a criticism of Ted Cruz, well, now it's our job because you ginned this thing up and now here you're calling upon us. That didn't take uh, 12 hours. And Senator Cruz stepped up and he said, okay, I'll filibuster in the United States Senate. And that's what he did. He stood there hour after hour throughout the night and made the case and made the case and inspired a nation. And the, the case of one individual stepping up and taking that kind of leadership and taking those lumps has, to this day, inspires us. And it gives me confidence that we will see this day that Obamacare is repealed. And so... <laughs> as I watch this man, who, the, the, the son of a, of a Cuban immigrant, uh, who grew up in a I'll say a challenging environment, but spiritually inspired very, very well, and showed the kind of uh, excellence, academic excellence, to go off to Princeton and off to Harvard and go back and still be a common man. One who will come to Iowa and pick up a shotgun and put some feathers in the sky alongside me. I like that. And, you know, we're uh, part of the way we measure people is how they handle a shotgun, and I will tell you that uh, I don't want to be the bird in front of Ted Cruz. So. <laughs>